Hi, and welcome back to the challenge. So today we're gonna do some myofascial release. I mentioned earlier in the, when did I say this? At the beginning, that you'd wanna have maybe a tennis ball and a foam roller. So today we're gonna use those things. If you don't have those, then you can just watch the pranayama video and practice your pranayama. But we're gonna start off standing with the tennis ball just underneath the balls of your toes. So start by squeezing your toes around, stretching your toes out a few times. So this, all this is important because, <clears throat> uh, I'll keep talking, but now start to go side to side across the front of your toe mounds. And the back. When I first started doing yoga, I used to think like if your body didn't move well, it's because your muscle's tight. Oh, so I gotta like stretch that muscle, get that muscle healthier. And then go back slightly from there, like an inch further, and invert and evert your foot. Twist the inner foot down, twist the outer foot down. But then I started, when I started to learn about the fascial chains and the fascia in the body, all the muscle is encased by this stuff called fascia. And the health of the fascia determines how much your muscle can stretch. Now start to go to the um, front of your heel and twist on there, like you're um, twisting. <laughs> and then go front to back along the inner arch, middle, like from the heel to each toe. Okay, so the point I was making with that is actually your muscle length is kind of like predetermined. The help, uh, it's like you're born with a certain ability, contractibility and, and flexibility in your muscle. And that doesn't change. So you're never gonna be able to get like, oh, I can, I can get better at stretching my muscle. What happens is if the fascia is unhealthy around your muscle, it's gonna limit how much your muscle can stretch. So if you can make the fascia healthier, if you can break up superficial fascia like what we're doing right now, then the muscle will be able to release into its length better, into its full length. It's not that you can make it longer. It's already gonna be how much it can lengthen and how much it can contract is already, I think I already said that, I'm being redundant now. But uh, so yeah, I, I had no idea until I started to learn about that stuff. It blew my mind. Okay, so now go to the other side, squeeze your toes around, stretch out a few times. So when you do this myofascial release, this just helps to break up the stuck stuff, the little like micro spots, because when you stretch, your, your body will tend to stretch the places that are already flexible, that are already getting good movement in the fascia, and your stuck spots just tend to stay stuck. So this is a great way to, un, great way to unstick the stuck spots. Roll front side to side across the front of the toe mounds, and across the back of the toe mounds. So I actually do this like three, four, sometimes five times a week. If I have time to, right before I practice, I'll do these little myofascial techniques and they help a ton. They've helped so much for me to recover from injuries and weird stuff that's going on in my body. And then invert and evert, twist the inner foot, twist the outer foot, seeing how much mobility you can get in the ankle. Go to the high point of the arch of the foot. Go side to side there. And then go to the front of your heel and twist on it. And then roll front to back from the heel towards the toe mound. Okay, cool. Then take your ball to the side. In case you ever wonder, what's in that basket? That's what's in the basket, oh, that's my props. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All my grinding tools. Okay, now we're gonna take the roller just above the knee. I'm gonna go right, not onto the side of the leg, not onto the quad, but right in between, in between the quads and the IT band. And then we're gonna start by going side to side. I'm not on the knee, I'm just above the knee. And then up and down. And then go up a little bit from there, side to side, and up and down. We'll just work the way 
up this line of the leg. Now, if this feels so intense to you, where you can't breathe, you can't even move, that means your foam roller is too hard. I'm using high density foam roller, the highest density that you can get on Amazon, I think, next to like just using a PVC pipe or something. And, uh, but I started out using the softest one and that was all I needed. And then after like doing it for a month, then I went up to the medium and then finally the hard one. You can also roll in between the hamstrings and the IT band. Let's do the other side. So from skateboarding, hiking, doing long walks with Ollie, these, these muscles, they get uh, pretty stuck to the IT band for me. And when that happens, my old knee, ankle, and hip injuries from skateboarding really flare up. So if I can keep this unstuck, then it helps with all my yoga poses and it helps with my movement so that like I don't get any knee pain, any hip, any low back pain. But if I don't do this for a while, I can start to feel in my yoga practice like, oh, it's gonna start getting weird if I take like any more time. So this really helps me, not just by doing the yoga poses, that helps too, but this I can feel it helps in the poses so much more so I can get deeper. All right, and then we'll throw the inner leg up onto the roller, like so. Okay, so I take it just above the knee, a few different techniques here. You can go side to side, you can internally and externally rotate, and then you can pin and bend and straighten your leg. And then just like we did up the IT band, you can kind of work your way up the leg using whichever one of these techniques or all three of these techniques feel to help. And change sides. Okay, now on to the hips. So take your roller and we'll have a seat with the buttock meat onto the roller. Now, when you roll the hip, you don't wanna roll on this outer hip bone, the greater trochanter, because you have a burst of there, a fluid filled sac, and you don't wanna grind on that because you could rupture it. So stay just above that spot, behind the spot, in front of the spot, don't go onto that spot. So on your buttock, you can roll up and down, side to side. You can even roll into the TFL, which is just um, to the side of the hip in between the glute mead and the front of the hip. And then one other technique that you can do to get into the piriformis is cross your ankle over your knee. And the piriformis, that's the muscle that feels stretched when you do this pose, ankle to knee pose. And then let's change sides now. So take the other buttock.
and piriformis. All right, now onto the upper back and the lats. So take the roller just at about the bra line, put your hands behind your head, and start to roll up and down in between your blades. And then you can kind of lean to the side and get kind of lots of knots along the inner border of the scapula, the shoulder blades. So this can help you to get into those knots and you can even do a little side to side action. Once you feel a little trigger point, get the other side too. Okay, now take the roller just about the bra line again and then roll onto your side, onto your, into your lat, side of your lat. And then we'll just roll side to side here. And then roll up slightly. Go side to side. So we got serratus in here, catching a little bit. So when these muscles get all stuck to each other in here, then it really limits the amount that the arm can stretch. So one really cool technique is if you roll out, we'll try it right after this. Now don't go all the way up into the armpit, stay just below the crease of the armpit when you're rolling this. Okay, let's try it. Have a seat and stretch the arm that you're just rolling. Ooh, and the one you, oh, it's still sticky. It doesn't want to, okay, so we can unstick it. Cool trick. So this is a way to feel that this is actually working. Let's take it right in line with the bra line. All right, so those are some great techniques that you can use to help to keep your body moving well, to unstick the stuck stuff. Um, one last one that I wanna show you is with the, let's get that tennis ball back out. And we're gonna roll right into the um, uh, upper traps, upper traps, levator scap. So these will, hold your shoulder blades up into this position instead of letting them drop out of your ears. So this will help to release neck tension and this will also help with your shoulder mobility. So maybe I should face this way so you could see better. Okay. So to get this one, I'm gonna lie down with the ball right here along the top inner shoulder blade. I won't feel much. Then I'm gonna lift the buttock up and slide the roller or the block underneath my butt. Okay, then I start to feel some sensation. And then with the arms to the side, as you relax, you're just gonna to start to shimmy your shoulders side to side.
and then take your arm up and move your arm around in different directions. And then you can also kind of wiggle your shoulder around, up and down, side to side. Cool, move that ball. And change sides. Then lift the buttock up again, slide the roller back underneath. Arms out to the side, just relax. And then start to shimmy the shoulders side to side. And then take your arm up and move your arm around in different directions. And then relax. Lift the buttock, move the ball, move the butt. And then you might just want to chill out for a minute in Shavasana after this, because he feels so good and relaxed. So this is your day off video. If you want to add in your little meditation, go back to day seven and practice the meditation again. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.